Welcome back to Reality Coaching for Writers, where today we're going to, we're going to, I think the question is, Diane, I'll list, have you ever wondered if you have a reason to write? What's our tagline? No fluff, just the real stuff you need. Yeah. So it's, it's been a little bit of a time since we, you and I were back on uh, the episode and we've had a chance to kind of process some things. I was going to a writer's conference for a while, which always, um, you know, it kind of leaves me inspired. Um, and this time I was actually more relaxed than I've probably ever been to a writer's conference. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, but, you know, it is it is one of those things we've talked about it before. Once you've been to the rodeo a couple of times, you know, all the clowns and all the bulls and all the other stuff that goes with a rodeo. And um, you, you know, I'm always going to see, is there anything new out there that, you know, maybe I'm not aware of this is, and this is like my once a year chance to go, well, it turns out they're still not. <laughs> so um, the the industry is still where it is. And as far as getting your book found, it's pretty much still the same, same things we've always talked about, um, which kind of brings me to the question of, uh, you know, have you been called a writer? Do you know you've been called a writer? Do you have a vision to write? Uh, and I sent you some information about uh, visions and how it all comes, comes uh, to fruition. Uh, but right before we came on, you were talking about something you're going through right now and how painful it is. So maybe just real briefly share a little bit about what you're going through physically, uh, and not emotionally, but physically. Well, four weeks ago, and I haven't mentioned this on social media, but four weeks ago, I had my left knee replaced. And um, I thought, like everything else I challenge I'm faced with, that I would just meet this challenge head on and I would you know just power through this be back at my desk in a week and uh, just be back at it and it has kicked my behind and really been a, a more of a challenge than I expected and it really gives me empathy for people that live with chronic pain it has uh given me a lot of alone time with God just um I've been thinking of uh, just stripping my life down to very basic elements. And Eddie, you and I were both talking about how we're looking at life now in this final season of our lives and our priorities and how how they're focused. They're like super focused. And, you know, it got to the point where it's like, God is the answer to everything through his son, Jesus. So let's write about that. And then we got talking about vision and purpose and mission in our writing. And uh, recently, Eddie, I didn't even tell you this, but one of the groomsmen in uh, one of my weddings, I've had to, <laughs> I have had some great victories in my life and I have had some epic fails like most people. If you live long enough, you have faced both. But um he passed away recently. So that ended in a couple of phone conversations that took us down uh, paths of the good old days. And, and for me, I was privileged to go through the Jesus revolution uh, and be involved in the Jesus movement and see miracles and hear so many, you know, uh, testimonies of people coming to faith and being delivered of drugs and alcohol and sexual addictions and all kinds of things. And we just, in these conversations with my old friends and one of my cousins, we just got fired up again about uh, what we want our end days to be about again, what we want to be focused on. And it is the vision of sharing life with those that don't know it. Yeah, that don't know it, yeah, yeah. You know, it was when you were talking about what you were going through and, and the pain and, uh, you know, the, the, I forgot exactly how you worded it at the beginning when you were talking about what you were going through and the pain. And I was thinking that w w feeds in exactly what we were talking about, what we're going to talk about today, which is the difficulty of becoming a successful writer. I mean, you and I have talked about this multiple times on these episodes. We've talked about techniques and tips and all this other stuff. But the reality is, I guess my perspective, having done this a while, is that it is very much almost like somebody with chronic pain. Okay, let's yeah. just, and I don't mean to, to diminish it, I'm just going to use chronic pain no. as like, yeah. because yeah. it's, 
it's something you wake up every day and you're you're in a state of discomfort. Okay. Yeah. So today's discomfort, yesterday was discomfort, and in your mind you're thinking that tomorrow's probably going to be not very comfortable too, right? That's probably the mindset, right? <laughs> But if you've written a, a ton of books, uh, and unless you're a, a top bestseller, you're living with this constant expectation, well, yesterday the books didn't sell well, they're not doing well today, probably not going to do well tomorrow, right? So it's, it's, it's this chronic expectation, right? And it's a pain, right? And let's just mm -hmm. say it's an emotional pain. And it, it is, is for me. Um, I mean, it just mm -hmm. is. If you've birthed this many babies, it's a pain not to see them succeed. It just is. It, it's a heartbreak, right? So I have been spending more time uh, studying, trying to figure out, for one, we know that God is good, and we know that, that he brings goodness. Um, mm -hmm. We live off that, and, and there's, I'm not going to get into a whole theological thing, but I, I do not accept the premise that God in, means for us to have badness in our life or, or anything negative in our life. That comes from the enemy. That's, that's a cursed world, and it comes from the enemy, and Certainly things are allowed to happen, but even then they come from the enemy, not from yeah. God. Right. Um, so God is good and his goodness is throughout scripture. So that's the premise I'm coming from. And I'm going, yeah, but still, it doesn't always seem to show up. Right. You know, we're, we're like there's there's this faith element. But where's the reality? What's the disconnect? And more and more, I keep thinking, well, if God's constant and he doesn't change and he's good, and, and Jesus promised all that. I mean, he said it over and over again. I came that you might have life into the bull, press down and all yeah. that. Yeah. Then the disconnect's got to be on my side. It just has to be. That's the only other conclusion I've come to. So uh, I've been studying this and uh, reading through it. And what I've concluded is I've come back to the point where the saying where Jesus said, I can't do anything except what I see my father doing. So Jesus always had a vision in his mind, in his head. He knew what he had already, what he was going to do because he had seen his father already doing it. And he's like, I'm going to go out and do that today. And, he, and I know I'm going to do it because that's, that's what he's doing, right? That's where the power is. So there's that vision that Jesus had. So then I went, okay, how many times did people in scripture have a vision of the healing that they were going to receive or the miracle that were, they were going to receive from Jesus. And from what I've read so far, every time they had a vision, yeah. every single one of them already knew in their mind what the healing or the miracle was going to look like. Um, and and we, I, I sent you a couple of examples. One was the very first miracle that Jesus did was he turned water into wine, right? Yeah. Now we don't see explicitly what Mary, his mother, saw right and and when i was praying about this and thinking about this over the past couple of days uh you know jesus kind of the lord basically said to me look <laughs> my mom has seen so many things over the years she had spent her whole life with me you know and he was like she didn't need to define what the miracle looked like she just knew if he says do it it'll get done because she had seen that happen too many times right so in mary's case she didn't have the logistics of the miracle laid out. She just said, if, if, he, if he tells you to do something, you do it, it'll get done, right? And that was her confidence in Jesus. So that was her vision, right? That's beautiful, yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. And, and so there's, and then the, the next one is, uh, I think the next miracle that Jesus did was uh, a, a Roman official in Herod's court. So a royal official in Herod's court uh, comes to him probably in Capernaum, in the Capernaum area, probably because this guy had heard, hey, that guy Jesus turned water into wine. Uh, and so this official comes to Jesus and says, sir. So he doesn't know Jesus. He just has heard of him. He didn't have a relationship with Jesus, yeah. not a disciple. He just comes to him and says, sir, my son is dying. Come to my house with me and heal him. And that puts Jesus in a kind of an awkward situation. Because here's a Roman official with the ability, if Jesus disobeys, to have him arrested and flogged, you know, maybe even executed, right? I mean, he's mm -hmm. this guy carries the cloud of Rome, and he's commanding Jesus, you come with me to my house, right? And Jesus is also sitting there going, yeah, but I don't only answer to my father. Now, I don't want to disrespect, disrespect the authorities, but 
Right. You know, so it's in a little bit awkward situation for Jesus. Um, and so what he does, Jesus just says, with a word, he's healed. And that gets Jesus out of the situation. And it shows this guy's tremendous faith in the authority of Jesus. And I think that's so important because mm. we often question whether or not Jesus will do it, can do it, or cares enough to do it. And here's Jesus, basically a stranger just walks up and demands that he does this thing. And Jesus doesn't blink. Sure, I got that. It's taken care of just like that. So those are two examples. And, and from that, that Roman official's perspective, in his mind, he's a guy in authority. He has heard that Jesus can turn water into wine or perform some miracle. And in his mind, that's all he needs to see. He sees himself doing the same thing with other people in charge. And he knows exactly what that looks like when you give a command and how it gets taken care of. And that's his vision. And that's exactly what he expected. And that's, that's what happened. And I'd love to get your take on, on these two and see what, see what your perspectives are. Yeah, no, that's so good. And I think you're right, Eddie, because um, it says he's given us everything we need for life and godliness. And um, just in going through this current rough situation that I'm in, um, it's a mindset. It's it. You can't allow the pain or the circumstance to uh, affect what you believe. You have to keep coming back to that solid firm foundation that God is who he says he is he can do what he says he could do and that he's more than willing and able and I think Eddie you you mentioned too that they came and asked and so often we don't receive uh our miracles and our answers because we allow shame or our failure to keep us from asking and um we see it with writers. They get discouraged because they got another rejection. They, you know, um, kept keep hearing the same thing from all the publishers or their agent or their, uh, you know, colleagues. And the thing is, is they have to hold on to that vision. And you, I think having a vision and grasping a hold of that will give you the perseverance to just keep asking. Uh, another scriptural example is the woman that came and asked that uh, Gentile woman that came and asked him and said, look, even the dogs receive the crumbs, you right. know, she, she, she was shameless in the fact to come. She knew who she was. She knew that Gentiles were outsiders, but she pressed in because she caught a vision of the character of Jesus. And she was confident that if he was who everyone was saying he was, and if he was who she had observed him to be, then she had confidence to ask. And she pressed in and, and she received from him. And I think as writers, you've got to keep going back to your mission, go back to what that thing is you feel called to do. And truthfully, it's we're all commissioned. We're all commissioned. Yeah. to tell the good news and to do that with whatever means we have. And Eddie, you write books. My commission is to assist those that write books. And I'm also writing. We'll see where that goes. But um, there's, there's some calling on all of our lives. But the main thing is to uh, do the thing that you have caught a vision for and then to just keep showing up keep knocking keep asking keep showing up like every day you get out of bed and you say okay lord today could be different today could be the day that you know you make me famous and yeah. my books sell like crazy but i know this i know that you care about the one so help me reach the one and yeah. then be be content and happy with that. But Eddie, uh, I just am so grateful for songwriters because praise music has just ministered so much to me. It's it's breathed so much life into me. It's 
as I sing along with the songs that are scripture based, it's reaffirmed what I believe, what I know. And I have a vision of what I'm going to do once I am re fully recovered. You know, there's I'll be able to hop in the plane and I'll be able to go places and do things and yeah. walk walk lands that I believe God's calling me to 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 visit. And but right now <laughs> it's it's not possible, you know, to to fold myself into a plane seat, it would be very uncomfortable. But in only a few weeks' time, it's going to change. It's yeah. going to change. So yeah, I'm think, holding on to that. I think sometimes, in fact, too often, I, I mean, I, I know I do this, and I, I know a lot of other authors do this, too. We've, I've talked about this at conferences with authors. Back to your point about getting discouraged, we forget. We, we just forget whose children we are. Mm. You know, we, we know we're saved. We, we claim to that and we'll preach that and teach that and argue about that all day long. But we forget that our oldest brother, our older brother is the king of kings and the Lord of the Lord of the Prince of Peace. That's our oldest brother. That's our, that's our big brother. Right. Yeah. And he's got our back and he sits on the throne with our father in heaven. That's who mm -hmm. we are. Right. Yeah. So goodness, when a publisher says, well, you're, you're not good enough, and I'm just, I'm going to go down this rabbit trail. When a publisher says that, that's their perspective, and I respect that perspective. But I still know, yeah, but I know who my dad is, and I know who my brother are, and they both think I'm pretty good. Now, they may, there may be some things in my writing that aren't up to your standards, but I can tell you this. My brother and my father think what I'm doing is pretty good. And, and they have told me, they have commanded me, to your point, to do this. Mm -hmm. And here's what I was, here's one thought I had when I was, uh, I don't know, a couple hours ago about this. There's an awful lot of bad writing that is very successful and well done. <laughs> there just is. And, and there, yeah. I think we're going to get a lot of argument out of it. There are a lot of classic books that people read and enjoy and are required reading that a lot of people look at and go, I cannot get through this. Well, that's by a definition, bad writing, right? And we have read books. I'm just gonna be so bold as to say, Diana, I think my books are at least as good or better than Fifty Shades of Grey. I just, I yeah. believe that, okay? Yeah. So it's not, so I just want the audience to hear, it's not a matter of quality. Yeah, you right. need to work on your craft. You need to get better and all that. But there is always going to be a place for your writing somewhere, somewhere. Even at the very beginning, there's always, even then, there's a place for your work. So don't get discouraged and go, I'm not worthy. Throw that lie away. If, right. you're, if you're in the kingdom, you are always worthy, and so is your work. Just keep working at it, yeah. and it'll become more worthy. Um, anyway, yeah. So, so yeah, we're worthy in the kingdom, and our, our our works are worthy. So there's a there's a passage. Um, it's in the healing of the paralytic, and and, and I, I looked this up today because that's about I forget which one. I think it's the, like sixth or seventh miracle that Jesus did. But everybody knows the story that the friends bring the guy to Jesus, and they bust through the roof and drop him through it. And you know, everybody's most people are familiar with that story. If you're a Christian, you know the story, right? So I got to thinking about that because there's this guy on the mat, right? So he's not the one doing the work. It's yeah. his friends It's his friends that are doing the work. But still, he has to have a vision. And of course, the, the, the guys themselves that are friends that are going to take him, they have to have a vision, right? Yeah. And so and I was thinking about that, that, and I was like, what did those guys think was going to happen? I mean, they heard Jesus was back in town, I guess. And somebody, they got a word. And I said, so they're going to go load up their friend. And let's assume you have to have four people. Maybe they could get by with two. We don't know how many people were there. But let's just say four, two to, two to carry the guy and another two to maybe navigate with the car or whatever. However, you get the guy there. So let's just say there's four guys, right? And then when they get to the house or when they get to the area, they see a crowd of people. And they're going, now what? I mean, we can't weave through these people all right they're not going to get out of the way what are we going to do and so i'm going to read let me switch class so i'm going to read what what they what they go through and as i read it i want i want the audience to listen to this as if as if you had a book and you were trying to promote it okay so when they got there there was 
no room left for them, not even outside the door. Bringing him, they carried him, the four of them, so it was four. They went up. They made an opening. They dug. They lowered. They laid him in front of Jesus. So the, the actions here are, when they got there, they were discouraged because there was no room. They couldn't even get to the door. They had to bring him further than they had planned. They had to carry him further than they had anticipated. Um, they couldn't get to Jesus. So that's just imagine you couldn't even get to the buyer of Barnes and Noble. You can't, yeah. you can't get to anybody at Amazon to say, help me with this. I can't get there. They had to make a way. They had to go up and dig. And I'll just kind of let it go at that. Okay. So what struck me is they had a vision of what they expected when they got there. And eventually their vision was that they were going to lay their friend at the feet of Jesus. But the way wasn't made easy for them. In fact, it was really difficult for them. And I think that's the takeaway I want our audience to have today is if you've got the vision vision of you, in your case, Diana, getting on a plane and being able to fly and go teach again and being able to go visit, being able to walk on the beach without pain, right? Yes. <laughs> that, that's the vision. And you know, you know it's going to be there. You know it will happen, right? But it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy or painless. Mm -hmm. It's just not. And that's the thing I want the audience to understand is when it comes to your books, there's really only one choice. You've got the vision and you know that you're a child of God, that Jesus is your big brother and your dad is up on the throne and they will go to great lengths for you. They are cheering for you and they will open doors for you. But they can't do the hard work. They're not going to do the hard work. They're just not. They're just not. They are expecting us to do the heavy lifting of the things we can do. And there's another comment. I think it's maybe in Luke. It's not in Mark. But in Luke, about this, this episode with uh, the man on the map, it says, I think it's in Luke. It says, Jesus had the power to heal that day. That's the only place. It's, that's the only place it's in. It's only of, of this this account. It's only I think in Luke. Jesus had the power to heal that day, and I was looking at that like, well, how did he get the power to heal that day? It's from the faith. Uh, it's from the faith of those four friends, and Jesus mm -hmm. knew that. Jesus, knew. it's the same. That same power is mentioned when the woman with the issue of blood comes and touches his the hem of his garment, and power went out from him. The same word, the same time. Jesus knows that when we have faith, when we are actually mm -hmm. believing that the thing we see is going to happen, when we know that, yeah. that yeah. activates the power for wow. him to do the thing we want, he, we want him to do for us. It's that That's act so good. Of faith. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I want the audience to, to, to kind of just take away this. If you have the vision, if you can create the vision and go, okay, what are the obstacles? I don't have enough reviews for my book. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough endorsements for my book. I don't have famous people that are touting my book. That, that's two things that are going to hinder the sales. Right. Um, I don't have enough books. People say they want series, but I've only got one book, right? So just go down the list of the obstacles and then go, yes, Lord, all these are obstacles, but where's the make a way path? There's always a make a way path. There's always a make way path. Lord, show me the make a way path so I can get to your feet with my vision, with my vision. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because he promises, I forget which particular scripture it is, but he promises that he'll make a way. Promises. And you look yeah. throughout history, <laughs> he made a way for the Israelites. He's, he made, made a way over and over again. And uh, yeah, that's good, Eddie. That's really yeah, good. He's a, he, he, you, you, you hit on that. You hit on that big time. If you go through scripture and look at how many times God or Jesus is making a path, how many times the mm -hmm. path is mentioned, he is huge in the past. And he doesn't say he's building highways or freeways yeah. or toll roads, 
but he's building paths. And you're, yeah. to your point, yeah. we just got to figure out where the path is and find that path and get there. But it, it's not going to happen if we give up on the vision. We can't give right. up on the vision. We've got we've yeah. all that. So uh, today's my birthday. Yeah. Every day, every day for my birthday, my vision is always, Lord, today, make it the day when my books just rocket and take off. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what a practical step step that I've done. And I'm, then I'll, I'll let us close with this. Um, because, I, you know, it's we've talked about what does what a success look like? And I went, OK, Eddie, because, uh, again, if if Jesus doesn't know what the vision is, what our vision is, he can't answer it. He won't answer it because mm -hmm. he doesn't know what to do. Right. He won't. He, right. he, he asking us, Tell me what you want me to do. That's what yeah. I'll do. But until you can tell me or show me, I don't know. What, I don't know what you want. Right. So he wants to, he, we have to have that vision. And I went, okay, so here's the vision. How many books do I have to sell in this category to become number one in that category? So I've gone into Publisher Rocket and I started breaking down every book, every category that I'm in and knowing how many books I've got to sell each day to get into those categories. That's part of my vision. That's just the start of it. Once I get into this category, how many to get into the next category and the next category and the next category? Diana, I've got to have more reviews from my books. I've got to have new reviews from my books. I've got to have endorsements from people that are famous that say, Eddie's not a bad writer. In fact, Eddie's a pretty good writer. In fact, I really enjoyed this book, right? Those yeah. are the things that we need to have for our books. And so this isn't about Eddie. This is about transferring what I'm saying about me to your books out there. You do the same thing or something like that. Create a vision for your books believe that Jesus expects your books to do well. In fact, believe that he expects even, even more than you do. And he's yeah. just been waiting for you to catch that vision. That's my closing comments. That's good. No, you've got to have a vision. And, um, you know, Marlene Bagnall, who has the yeah. Philadelphia Christian Writers Conference and the Colorado one that will be in person again this year, you know, has for years helped writers realize that you've got to have a vision, write it down, make it plain, put it where you can see it every day, you know, because having a vision, without a vision, God tells us, without a vision, his people perish. It means you won't have success. You will only live in shame and, and, and all the things that the enemy uh, has planned for you. But when you catch a God vision and a God-sized dream, then, you know, you will receive from the Lord the steps that it takes to fulfill that vision because he places those in our hearts. They they originate from us. Uh, they appear to originate from us, yeah. but that's the beautiful thing about God is he created each one of us to fulfill something that will bring him glory and honor. And that's our greatest privilege is to capture that vision and that dream and then walk it out that's yeah. that's the height of um fulfillment to me is when you can plug in and and <laughs> capture that vision and um i'm excited because god's stirring up a fresh vision for me and in my life and um i'm looking forward to him he's been in this a long time in this time when I can't be everywhere I want to be and participating in all the programs and uh, things that I'm blessed to participate in on a normal basis. It's, it's helping me hyper-focus down on that vision. And when I get a hold of it and I'm going to pick it up and run with it, you know, and that's going to be, uh, bring me a lot of joy. I'm looking forward to that. So but yeah, catch, catch that vision, spend some time alone with God and write it down and then put it where you can see it and then just baby step your way to it. Sounds great. All right. Well, we will see you next week. I expect to hear an update on how many, many steps down the beach you walk next week. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, everybody, for spending time with us. Happy birthday, Eddie. Bye. Thanks, Bye.